Hey, what's up everyone? So I posted on my Instagram what I should vlog about today because there is no Beast Morpher episode this weekend. So I decided to share with you guys some of your, um, uh, what you kind of recommended, which was to, well, there's many things. Some people said fit tips, some people said to review conventions or other videos on YouTube for other seasons. I'm just gonna talk about how I became a Power Ranger, if that appeals to you guys. So I don't know, maybe if you wanna be a Power Ranger, you'll learn how I became one and then maybe that helps you. I'm gonna eat a yogurt covered raisin now. All right, anyway. So, <clears throat> back in the day, when Power Ranger Samurai was casting, I got an audition for it. I was so into that audition process, like, I wanted that role more than, like, anything, because I grew up watching Power Rangers and, like, Mighty Morphin through about Lost Galaxy or so. Anywho, I really, 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 really wanted the role. And so, I went and I, I took, like, a private martial arts class and stuff, and I wasn't at that time as skilled in circus as I am now or martial arts. So, I mean, I was athletic, but I had so much to learn still. So I took some classes and whatever, and I go to the first audition and, you know, I think I was for, they don't really tell you what color you're auditioning for. You just kind of get a vibe of who's the leader and you assume that's, you know, Red Ranger or whatever. And uh, so I ended up going for three different auditions for it. So one audition, two callbacks. And the third callback was actually the day after Avatar The Last Airbender came out for M. Night Shyamalan's movie. And I wanted to go to the midnight premiere with all my friends, but I decided not to, because I was like, I should sleep and rehearse and prepare. And so I missed going, which apparently the movie wasn't, you know, as that good. I've never actually seen it still, but my friends didn't like it. But uh, I went to the audition, I ended up not getting it. Um, and I was really, really devastated that I did not get uh, Samurai. So, Whatever, I was mad at Power Rangers. I didn't even look into auditions anymore for it. Didn't even hear about the Mega Force auditions, didn't care. I was just kind of jaded and annoyed. And I was working at the San Diego Zoo when they started holding auditions for Dino Charge. And I was there working as an acrobat seven days a week with my fiance, now wife, who was also working as an acrobat. And we were just down there in San Diego working. And a friend of mine that I met at an acting class three years prior actually hit me up and he was like, hey Brennan, I was auditioning for something and near my audition, I saw a sign that they were auditioning for Power Rangers. And I remember you being circusy and acrobatic. And so I went and talked to them and they said they'd be interested in meeting you. Well, that was really nice of him because again, A, I haven't talked to him in years and B, he of his own volition went and talked. And like when we used to go to acting class together, we were both, you know, very, you know, strong on our faith and just trusting God to, you know, to lead us. Like you put in the work, you don't just sit there and expect blessings to fall out of the sky, but you know, you have a passion, you go after it. But I was really discouraged with acting um, because I, I had a two year dry spell. I literally booked one modeling job in two years. I was gonna quit. I just signed up for Cal Baptist University. Once I finished the, well, actually while I was at the zoo, I was starting to take an online course and then I was gonna go in person um, once the zoo contract wrapped up in like September. So. I was like, um, okay, I guess I'll audition. You know, I still was annoyed at Power Rangers since they didn't hire me the last time. And I didn't know if it was the same casting or not um, when I first went. So I drove out to LA and I went to the first audition and I was like, whatever, you know, I'm just gonna try it and see what happens. And I did it and ended up getting a call back. I was like, okay, well, you know, I got a call back last time, so whatever. Um, the first audition, it was just reading the lines. Like, you know, they sent you some sides and you read them and you don't know the context or who you're even reading for because all the names are different like they're not it's not Tyler and Shelby and blah 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 it's random names and I got a call back at the callback um they told us they wanted us to do like a 30 second physical demonstration of some kind of skill so I decided to do handstands because that's what I've been training in acrobatics a lot and I was much better than I was when I auditioned for samurai so I did some handstands in the room and they seemed to like that cool Got a call back again a couple weeks later. It's a very long process. I think like from start to finish, probably like almost three months went by. Um, so third third audition, they wanted another physical demonstration and some other side. So I did it again and I brought my handstand posts, which are like objects you hand bounce on just to show different variety. And I thought it was cool. And they, I think they even made a joke like, oh, those would be hard to bring to New Zealand though. I was like, actually, no, I could if you needed me to. And then so I left. And then I heard that I got 
uh, I was going to the chemistry read, like the testing round, where you actually sign the contract before you go, because if they cast you, they don't want to have to then renegotiate with you, like for how much you're going to get paid and all of that. You're basically good to go if you accept it, if they hire you. So for this one, now I actually, I wanted Power Rangers again. I was like nervous and I was anxious and I was just like, you know what, God, I'm just going to trust in you. I didn't even go to an acting coach. Normally I get private coaching on auditions I want, but sometimes I feel like I'm influenced too much by the coach versus my natural instinct. So I was like, you know what, if I'm going to book this, it's going to be a thing between me and God and let's just see what happens. I packed literally a rainbow of shirts because I didn't know what color they wanted me to read for. So I had all different colors of like solid shirts in my bag and I go to the audition and I knew the lines for the main character. They told me to go, whoever it was at the time. And so I do my audition and then they're like, good. So at a chemistry read slash mix and match, they have a bunch of different people and they don't know who they want to be what color ranger yet or who looks like they would or who interacts well, like who has good chemistry. A chemistry read is to find chemistry between the actors. And so I ended up reading, uh, actually with Michael Tabor, one-on-one, -on -one. it was like a scene, like we're at a carnival or something, and he was discouraged, he wasn't good or something, and I was trying to cheer him up. And I believe I was actually auditioning for Tyler by cheering him up, being like the energetic guy. And you know, he felt discouraged, like he didn't fit in, which was kind of Riley's thing at certain points. And so the, we thought it went well in there. And then we go back in the waiting room, they give you new new scenes <clears throat> to study sometimes. And they actually gave me James's, uh, the Black Rangers role. And it was something about a skateboard and a cool trick. And I felt really awkward, I don't know, performing as the Black Ranger, even though I didn't know what color it was. Just like the lines didn't feel natural to me. The other character did much more when I read with Michael. And then, so I go back out. And then they wanted us to do a physical demonstration again. Um, so this time I prepared like handstands again. I did some kicks and punches and I did a backflip to end it. And I saw Yoshi at the the re, or at the chemistry read. I saw Camille there, obviously Michael. Um, I didn't see Claire. I didn't see Davi. James was in New Zealand, so I obviously didn't see him. I didn't see anyone else. Um, I mean, other actors who ended up not getting the role, but those are the ones I saw. So Yoshi and I ended up bonding in the uh, in the waiting room because we were talking about like, yeah, I'm a stunt man. I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm an acrobat. And so I started asking him like how I could do stunts because that interested me too. So he gave me a rundown of a whole bunch of fancy names and tricks I need to know, which I had no idea what they were. I was like, oh, cool, cool. And uh, yeah, so we just kind of hit it off. And then, yeah, what happened next? Oh, and then actually off topic, um, when I first got there, I think the first person I talked to that day, well, it's still on topic, I guess, was um, Camille. She walked in and she was looking at me and I look at her and she's looking at me and she goes, were you in Hawaii? And I'm like, what? She's like, were you in Hawaii? It's like, yeah, like in middle school or my freshman year of high school, both of those years, or like eighth grade and ninth grade, why? She's like, I think I, I saw you there. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, what island were you on? I was like, I was on Maui. I stayed at whatever hotel. And she's like, did you go running in the mornings on the beach sometimes? And I was like, yeah. She's like, I think me and my cousin saw you running. And we were like, oh, that guy's really cute. It's just like the randomest thing that she could say to me. Like, I had no idea who she was because she never introduced herself to me in Hawaii. But apparently, I, we were on the same island in Hawaii and she saw me like eight years or however long prior. I don't remember how old I was, but it was just funny. It was like, so like, I don't know, things happen for a reason. You're like, cool. So I didn't know who she was. I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, but again, I was engaged or whatever, but I was just like, it was just funny, you know? And then, um, yeah. So like, then we did a chemistry read where they brought in groups of people together. So I believe it was me, Yoshi, Michael, Camille, and some other people. And then they mix and matched us and they had me read the black Ranger in there and then the red Ranger in there. And then we all had to take a group photo together and they even filmed us running in the parking lot to see like if we run heroically because in Power Rangers you run and then like there's an explosion you got to get there fast or you got to run away or whatever you know and if you run non heroically whatever that means I don't know um, you know it's just something they wanted to check so I ran heroically I guess so hooray so now after this audition I was told this was the final audition like there'd be no more they get back to us like within a month cool didn't hear anything for a week, for a week, for another week, and another week, and another week. I was like, man, I didn't get it. But Jenna Johnson, who's uh, Iris Hampton's casting assistant, um, she actually came to the San Diego Zoo to watch my show with Caitlin. And she came down with a couple friends, and she's like, oh, your show's so good. And I was a koala doing Chinese pole, which is an acrobatic apparatus where you do like human flags and stuff. 
And I was like, man, so did you hear anything? Like, do I get to trade this koala head for like a, a helmet or something? And she's like, I ah, haven't heard anything yet. Sorry. I was like, okay, bummer. And then the next, um, like the following Monday, I get a, an email from my manager and he's like, hey, so Power Rangers wants to see you one more time. I was like, they've seen me four times, literally four times. And they saw me three times for Samurai. Like how many times do they need to see you before they make up their mind? I was like, fine, I'll go, whatever, that's fine. And so I go and I drive there. Cause again, I have to drive from San Diego to LA to be back in time to do two circus or three circus performances every day. Seven days a week was my schedule at the zoo for the summer. So I go down there and I was like, whatever. So Caitlin came with me. I wore a red shirt. Cause this time, like, I think they told me what color to wear. And I go in the audition room and normally you know what your sides are beforehand. You know what you're gonna say. You've gotten them at least a day before. And so this time they just hand me the sides. That's called a cold read when you literally just get them and that's your first time making eye contact with them. Cold because you're not warmed, prepared. And I was like, oh, um, do you mind if I step outside to go over these so I can rehearse for you guys? And they're like, no, no, you gotta do it right now. I was like, really? They're like, yeah. And like, honestly, that that's the only time it's ever happened to me in my career of acting in the past 12 years. So I was kind of like, okay, uh, this is gonna be weird. And so I read it and in the scene, uh, I'm reading with Iris and she's talking about how like, you know, she's the like my, my mentor or something and she has this box, this treasure chest and I have to open it to reveal my destiny. And so they actually handed me a treasure chest, which again, normally you don't have props in an audition room. So I take this box and I was like, oh, okay. And then like, you know, I'm trying to be in character and I, I opened the box and inside was a laminated picture going, congratulations, Brennan, you're the Red Ranger. And I was like, really, really? I actually think they have somewhere on YouTube, like all of our reactions to being cast. Um, yeah, but they, they made it a secret. So that fifth audition was literally me driving from San Diego to LA to be told I got the role. They gave me this basket full of like Red Ranger themed toys and candies and whatever and it was so amazing i remember walking out of the room and i go up to caitlin i was like looks like we're going to new zealand she's like really i was like really like i don't know, really it's just the word to say and then i got in the car and i played the mighty morphin theme song like 10 times in a row driving back to san diego and uh yeah that's kind of what happened and then a couple weeks later uh well a couple days later chip called me um and you know asked if i was excited and everything and i was like yeah definitely and a couple weeks later before he knew it i was uh on a plane to New Zealand. And uh, that's how I became the red Power Ranger for Power Rangers Dino Charge. If you have questions, comment below. I hope that video is interesting to you. If these videos are too long, let me know. I mean, I could always split it into two videos. Um, maybe I'll even split this one into, I don't know, maybe not. But yeah, that's it. I hope you guys liked it. And that's my origin story. I should make a movie. Brenda Mejia, the origin story of Tyler Navarro or something. No, I shouldn't, that'd be dumb. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna go now. Bye. <music>